Hello, this is SP Favor Thinking, and my name is SP Favor. Thank you so much for listening today. We have a special guest. Her name is Sky. She is going to share her personal inspirational experience. She is currently um, experiencing with God. She is um, transforming. She was a masculine woman dressing in masculine clothes. And now she is currently in a relationship with God and she is seeking to be more feminine and she is learning how to do it God's way. So, Sky, how are you today? Fantastic. Great. So, um, give us a little background about how you got to this point to have a relationship with God and to desire a change to be more feminine? Well, um, I've always had a relationship with God. I just was in a certain lifestyle. And, you know, growing up in church and everything like that, you know that it's, you know, that's not what the Bible says, you know, to women that's supposed to be together and stuff like that. And um, I, I dealt with a lot of people that were very judgmental. But I felt a certain type of way and I didn't know why. So... I knew that I did not like men from things that I went through in childhood and things like that. But I just gravitated towards women. So I would dress the way I dress to not to entice men, not to try to be one, if that makes sense. And um, recently when, like I said, I always had a relationship with God. I always read the Bible and things like that. So I would pray about it. And I would say, Lord, if if I know that this is wrong, can you take it from me? Mm -hmm. And I always still had a desire for women. Mm -hmm. Until recently, um, I got baptized on March the 28th, Mm -hmm. um, 2020, which is four months ago at this point. Right. And that's when I changed the way that I dressed thereafter. I just did not want to wear those clothes anymore. So let me ask you this question. uh So what made you want to dress masculine? I mean, if you could share that part. And then we can get on to other questions. But yeah, you're fine. Growing up, um, I would try to dress feminine. And then my mom would say, well, that's too tight. Take that off. And I I think it was so I would entice little boys and stuff like that. And Mm -hmm. I didn't know any better because I was a child. And then I would dress like a boy. And she would say, well, why are you dressing like a man? I'm like, well, what do you want me to wear? So I was real confused, first of all. And then I did get a lot of attention, which I didn't want because I don't like attention. So I was like, well, I get less attention if I'm dressed like this. So I'll dress like this. So when but, you, okay, go, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was saying, what in the Bible, it says that, you know, men are not supposed to wear women's garments and women are not supposed to wear men's garments, but I was just very confused with a lot of stuff. That makes sense. I mean, that makes perfect sense. So, so for how many years did you dress masculine? For 35 years. Well, I was a child, little, when I was little, but I, when I got old enough to dress myself and start buying my own clothing and stuff, mm-hmm. I was like, I started thugging it when I was in high school. I would dress like a little tomboy, you know what I mean? I didn't dress feminine. Like, I say ninth grade and 10th grade, maybe, but 11th and 12th grade, mm-hmm. uh-uh. I was, yeah. So you I was never- always. So you never felt comfortable just with the girly lipstick or just went being girly? You never felt comfortable being girly? No. I, I would do it, like, say if I went to the prom, I would do it for one night, and that was it, and that was for a few hours. But no, honestly, I did not. I felt, almost felt naked because people would just stare. And I was like, what is everybody looking at? Because whatever people see when they look at me, I don't see it when I look at myself in the mirror. So, would you say you had somewhat of a low self-esteem, or do you agree with that? I would say um, I had low self-esteem, but I also had other things as well as that. Okay. You know, it was it was other things attached to that. Okay. So, tell me about your current transformation in terms of like what happened for you to desire to now become more familiar with your womanhood and being familiar being excuse me being feminine honestly um when i changed my name Mm -hmm. it was like uh that was the first step me changing something that i did not like because my name was attached to other stuff you know like childhood trauma and things like that so Mm -hmm. 
when I changed my name, it was like a renewing of my mind. That mm-hmm. was the first step. And then I would talk to God. I talked to God about everything. Okay. I mean, even down to what to wear, to what I eat. Okay. Anything. You know, what I bathe with and, and lotions and all of this stuff. But anyway, um, I just talked talk to him about my name and I changed it. when, And, and as I became like a better person. And then after that, I, I started to transform into, and I hadn't changed my clothing yet, but I, I started to transform into a, a, a nicer person. I had so much rage and anger and bitterness and resentment about a lot of stuff. And I said, Lord, I don't want to wear this. I don't, when I say wear it, I don't want to have this on the inside of me, walking around with it every day. I want to be delivered from all of this. And I just want to be free. So your experience with God and experiencing his love Transform your anger, basically. You're saying yes. He transformed me. He transformed me from the inside. Yes, and then out. It was like I felt it on the inside, but everybody else gets to see it on the outside. So basically, the anger and the resentment and everything that you felt mentally was a outward appearance of what you were doing according with your clothes. Would you say that? I would say that, and it was it was to deter people to keep them from even coming up to me. Like now, I look approachable. I did not look approachable back then. I okay. look like don't mess with her, get out of her way, because she be the shot. Okay. But now, I look like I want to go over here and say hi to this lady, and I want you to come say hi because that's how I am. Hello, hi. That's okay. really me. I'm sweet. Okay, so tell me about the compelling love of God because. According to my personal experience, God, what he does is he compels us to do what is right and what is good by his love. And so it sounds like, based upon what you're saying, that you experienced his love on another level. Even though you already had a relationship with God, his love touched your mind and your heart and your soul. And it compelled you to think differently about yourself so that you can meant for something differently outside. So that's when the change came with your clothes. So tell me about um, that change in the clothing, which started to match, which starts to match your thoughts, basically. Tell me about that. Oh, oh, absolutely. It was a situation where, okay, I started to see people and see things, how God sees it with compassion and with love. That's what he is. Mm -hmm. He has compassion, he has love, and he does things with grace. Yes. And that is how I, cause I asked him for that. I said, Lord, help me to see things how you see it. I don't want to see it through my eyes because I'm so minute. You understand? Like mm-hmm. my understanding, lean not to your own understanding. I have to, I have to trust him. And he told me when he said, you trust me, but you don't trust my timing. And I said, I sure don't. And, but who am I to say, I don't trust your timing. You're God. And I'm just somebody that you created. You know what? I, it was true. So he knows my heart. I just keep it. 100% real with God and he does the same when it comes to me and look at the change I had on a dress the other day and I thought I would never have on a dress willingly on my own well that's a beautiful thing because once again um, I just truly believe that you know there's a scripture that says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he right so if a woman or a man thinks about something long enough that's what they become and sometimes unfortunately if a person dressed a certain way or acts a certain way it's because they sat and they thought about it long enough now i'm only saying that pertaining to pertaining to how people dress sometimes because people have visual images of themselves and how they want to look and how they may feel comfortable in how they look so um, like I said, if if a person thinks about something long enough, that's what they become. So you changed your mind, and because you changed your mind, God changed your mind. So you started changing how to dress. So how do you feel now? I feel I feel fantastic. I really do, and I, I thank God for being so patient with me because He always knew my heart. Other people always judge me, gal and gal. But guess what? I always had a relationship with God. I know the Bible. Always read it. But it's like. I don't live for man. I I, I love people. I don't like our ways. And I say our as in mine as well. And I said, Lord, change this about me. I do not like this about myself. And I can't change it. I need you. I need you. Your help. I need you to change it. You see what I'm saying? You you have to seriously sit down with God and be honest with him and with yourself. Some people walk around thinking that it's everybody else. No, 
It could be you. You could be the toxic person. And I was once that toxic person. That's awesome. I really was. That's really awesome that you can honestly admit that you were toxic because see honesty is the key thing with God I truly believe that honesty is so key because when you have a divine relationship with God and when you are honest with him daily that is what the relationship is based on honesty it's the the the, the lies that unfortunately that some people will tell before God that puts them in a bad position not to be transformed, but because you were honest, I truly believe that the love of God compelled you and God just came a little closer to you because you were honest. That's what I truly believe about you. Based upon what you have already said, I truly believe that. So um, let me ask you this. So now that you have made this transformation or you're in the process of making this total transformation, do you feel that you have acquired more self-love? Because that sounds like more self-love too. I have. I've acquired more self-love. Um, like growing up, my mother, I, I was raised by a single mom. So it's like I have one older brother. It's in same mom, same dad. But my mom worked so much because she wanted to make sure that we had what we needed. My mom always bought me Bibles and she brought me up and said, train up a child in the way that they should go and they were never part. And okay, I might have went out there in the world, but I never got away from my relationship with God and I was like, God, oh, how you doing me like this? He said, I had to send you through that. You had to go through this so you can relate. It's one thing to sympathize with somebody, it's another thing to empathize with them. Yes. I absolutely. can empathize with somebody losing their father because my father is deceased. I cannot. I, all I can do is sympathize when it comes to losing your mom because I still have my mother and I saw her today. So I said that to say I appreciate my mother because she did the best she could. It's not designed for you to do it by yourself. But my relationship with God, honestly, I it, it stemmed with her. She installed that in me as a child. So yes. I will always love her for that. Well, that's beautiful. That's really beautiful. So let me say this to you. Um, on a personal note, I encourage you to continue with your relationship with God because it's going to get even that much more better. Um <sighs> You know, when you say things like, oh, I always had a relationship with God. Check it out. You had a relationship with God on your own terms. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? But the transformation yeah. came because you now have a relationship with him on his terms. And the only reason why I can tell you that is because I've been there myself. I can share with you that that transformation is it's going to become even more sweeter because that self-love that's in you is his love. And so as it increases, then, you know, the transformation is going to be that much more evident. So um, let me ask you this. What would you tell a woman right now that's listening to this? Someone that is searching and seeking answers about why she may be dressing like a man or acting masculine what would you say to her if she needs some answers i don't want anybody to feel bad about dressing masculine we don't want anybody to feel bad but sometimes some people need answers to be different and do something different so what would you say to somebody that needs an answer right now just to be inspired to seek god to be different the first thing that I would say is to talk to God about it because first of all they just clothes and I look at myself as just playing dress up <laughs> you know how you did come home from work you put his uniform on or his jacket or whatever like okay I can change that mm -hmm. in, an, in, in, in an instant I can just change my clothes and put on something else mm -hmm. it starts from within you got to figure out why you're wearing those clothes where did that start at where you changed because when we're little, our clothes are bought for us. When we get a certain age, we can buy our own clothes. Make sense? So and you got to figure out what made you want to go into the men's section versus the women's section. Wow. And and we all need correction. I just needed to be corrected. And the Holy Spirit did that for me after I got baptized. So I just did not want to wear those clothes anymore. And I said, Lord, I don't want to wear these clothes. And my people started coming out of the woodwork behind it. They would give me clothes or they would buy me clothes and take me shopping and I was like wow like when I said that that meant something yes. in the spiritual world and in the physical world because people
people were blessing me with clothes like I had never seen before. And I was like, okay, Lord, that means I'm doing the right thing because... I did not have the money to go buy a whole new wardrobe. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. But he knows my heart. Mm-hmm. So I would take them to first start with a relationship with him. And he'll change everything within. And then the outward appearance will change. But you, for some people don't feel comfortable in their skin. They don't. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, sometimes, I mean, this is just my opinion. Unfortunately, sometimes some women... They do things because nobody never told them they were beautiful. Nobody never told right. them, um, dr- dress, you know, put this on or put that on, you know. So, unfortunately, because of that, some women just never get there, and you know, that way. But like yourself, with God, it's possible. But I'm so glad that you are sharing your story. Um, I pray that your journey is blessed going forward. And so let me ask you this. How does your family feel about everything? I mean, have, I mean, I'm sure they have their opinions about everything now. My family has always been there for me. They didn't like a lot of things, and they may have talked about it. But one thing about it, mm-hmm. if I called them and needed them, they were there. But they are so overjoyed to see me how I am now. Um, my uncle hugged me twice and said, "Come here, big girl." And then my mom, she sent my picture with the dress on to everybody. She said, "Just gorgeous." And I, it's like it, it for me to see the smile on their face and make them happy. I made the change for myself and for God, of course, first. But <clears throat> for me to see that with them is just I'm. I'm it, it, it means the world to me, it does, and I just sit back and smile because it, it's like I'm a late bloomer with everything, you know what I mean? Everything. So, okay, to me, 35, I'm 36 now, I just had a birthday, but it, I'm like, hey, it just took me a little later, but I, I thank God for my life, I thank God for everything that I've been through because it, it made me who I am and it made me more understanding and I have compassion for people whatever situation you're in you name it i've done it and if you name it i've probably been through it well you so i'm understanding well you're being prepared to empower someone else because everything that we go through is for someone else you know everything that you talked about i understand it um based upon just having conversations with people and being around friends and family members discussing these type of topics um it's so important like you stated we have to have compassion for people we just can't judge people and and conclude why they do what they do and the way they do it we have to have compassion and have conversations to, to understand people and then we could possibly you know help them you know Amen. And I agree with that. And I'm going to tell you why you never know what somebody been through. That's they right. could be sitting there about to fall apart while you're about to judge this person or mistreat them. That's right. You treat people with kindness and with compassion the way God does. Absolutely. You know, um, it's so important that we pay attention in society too. You know, when we uh, come across strangers, you know, I, I say this all the time to friends and family members that when you are out in the public, just be a little bit more patient. Take a minute to pay attention and you might be able to meet a need if you're paying attention. But sometimes we become frustrated and impatient because we're not paying attention. We're thinking about self, right? So, yeah, so we do have to take time out to, um, like I said, be more uh, compassionate and have empathy and just meet the needs of people. But thank you so much for sharing your story and um, I would like to possibly have you back again to talk about um, your journey and what's going on in, in, the, in the possible future. Um, I appreciate you just being honest. I mean, it's a blessing and I hear the joy in your voice and thank God for um, everything that he's doing for you. And I just I pray blessings over you. And I thank you again for um, sharing. Do you have any well, it was it was definitely an honor. I appreciate you having me and listening to me and anybody that listens to this. I, I want to encourage them and I want to bless them with um, <clears throat> just encouragement, plain and simple. Just talk to God about whatever you're going through. It's not going to be an overnight situation. It's going to be a process. But I, I also want to let people know God loves you just the way that you are. He loved me the way that I was. And the clothes that I was baptized in men's clothing. But guess what? I'm wearing women's clothing now 
Amen. <laughs> and so Amen. don't That's ever awesome. think God can save anybody. Don't ever think that, well, I'm too far gone. No, you're not, sweetheart. You are not too far gone. So um I, I appreciate you just having me and, and um anytime you want to talk, I am here. Absolutely. I will invite you again. And listeners, thank you so much for listening. Um, if you would like to reach me, please reach me via email at sbfavor at yahoo.com. You can also reach me at Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at sbfavor. Thank you so much for listening and have a good day.